Joining me now from Kyiv is Kira Rudik. She's a member of the Ukrainian parliament, a leader of the Holos party. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Look, we're all uh, hearing reports of atrocities outside of Kyiv in uh, various towns. Can you tell us, like Bucha, can you tell us what the Ukrainians are finding there? Hello, thank you so much for having me. So, I've been there today and the day before. I have seen mass graves with 300 bodies, most of them with their hands tied behind their backs. Men, but also women and children. Some of them killed altogether, some of them killed separately. People like, but, and dead bodies lying on the sides of the road. Uh, the bodies that they were tried to burn, especially women, to cover for the rapes and all the other sexual assaults that happening there. So what we have seen was a total genocide. And I'm using this word intentionally because, because these people, they were not armed. They were not resistance. They were not trying to oppose the occupants, they were just living there at the outskirts of Kyiv, you know, peaceful place where you plan to move when you're turning 35 and want to settle down. Now they are all gone. They're all gone. And we were also They're talking to people who, who survived it. We were talking to women who were raped in front of their children. We were talking to people whose children died because they they got pneumonia and they were at the basement for 39 days straight without any ray of light. We were talking to people who, who were telling us horrendous, horrible things that happened. Like, you know what was the worst thing that I witnessed today? It was the destroyed building. Building where people, a home where people burned alive. But the fans were still standing. And there was a message in the paper file on the fence. It was written, we are peaceful people. They were indeed peaceful people, but it didn't help them out. Did not. They all died. And, and this is something that is, that is a red line. And if right now there is any world leader who would say there are two sides of this story, then he or she needs to reconsider. If there is somebody who would say, okay, we'll continue buying Russian gas and oil, then I can tell you they are paying for exactly these things to happen in my country, for my people, to my people. And if there are world leaders or world organizations who are still thinking that there is still time to decide to give us or not to give us the weapon, to support us or not to support Supporters, I can tell you there is no time because right now, while we are talking, there is more of these crimes happening on the other side of Ukraine, on the, on the eastern part, in, in cities of, like Mariupol that has been occupied for, for 40 days and destroyed, same way as Bucha. Kira Rudik, um, first of all, I want to just pause for a minute because in the last two days you've seen some atrocities. As you say, 300 bodies, mass graves, children being executed, as you say, rape victims, burned bodies. It's horrific. You know, Kira Rudik, that the Russians deny it. You know that the Russian Foreign Affairs Minister Lavrov today alleged that this is staged. You know Russian news outlets are saying that this is uh, done by the Ukrainians. I I'd like your response to the fact, you know there have been calls for an, quote, independent investigation. What is your response to the Russian view or the response to the, bef the need to investigate this independently? There is no Russian view. They are lying and keep lying. They are barbarians who came to destroy us. Orcs, we are calling them orcs, because there is nothing holy for them. You know, today and yesterday, one of the goals that I had when I was going into this darkness it was first to bring all the international journalists from the 
top media of the world so they would be able to see it and to show it to the people, even to those who don't want to look. And another point was for me to come and see it and witness it by myself. Because one day, I plan to be a witness at his trial. I plan to make sure that every single person responsible for these crimes is held accountable. And that at some point, I will be able to say what I have seen. Kira Rudek, you know, the President of the United States has called this a war crime. Many others have. I, I want to ask you, because what happened in Bucha is maybe happening all over Ukraine, as you know, uh, despite the, the denials or the lies by the Russians. I, I have to ask you, you're a politician. Uh, you've been in a war for, as you say, 39 days. But how, how did seeing what, what you saw in Bucha how, did the, how has that impacted you? I know that I will never be the same. But my country and my people will never be the same as well. I am seeing what my people are seeing. I, I am bearing arms the same way as my people are bearing arms. Because right now, the most important thing that's happening for Ukraine is we are united as never. And and the, all the traumas that we are getting, the rage that we are feeling, we, is helping us to stand, to stand forward and to fight them. Is, is, there, is there any way that... I know there's negotiations to, to try to bring some kind of peace. Is there, are there any parliamentarians who are ready to give up any territory, including Luhansk or, 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 or Donetsk? You know, my party uh, offered a, a bill. We voted and signed it against the parties who work for Russia, against the ones who, who are able, to, who are willing to give up our territories. For the rest, I'm sure that right now Ukrainian parliament not ready to give up any Ukrainian territories. And after what we have seen, what we have witnessed mm. today, I'm sure there will be a stop in the peaceful negotiations or at least we will not be able to call them peaceful. Kira Rudik, member of Ukraine parliament, who toured Bucha, where there have been, according to the Ukrainians and many others, horrific atrocities and war crimes. Um, let's talk again. I, I appreciate it, and please take care. Thank you. Thank you, and glory to Ukraine.